Hey guys, Abby with Motor City Nerds here, and I got my Santa Coke shirt on. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. I got off work like an hour ago, and then I was low on tire pressure. It was a whole thing. It's like negative 13 here. My tootsies are freezing. But do you guys want to know what I really want to talk about really quick, just for the holiday season? One, Coca-Cola, put Santa back on your Coke cans. I've been complaining about this for years. I don't understand why you guys ever took him off. I don't like it. You can still donate to polar bears. Your Coca-Cola, you can donate to whatever you want. Put Santa back on the Coke can. The Rankin Bass movies, the claymation ones, you guys know what I mean? Like Rudolph and all of those. I want to talk about like the top ones, but then I really want to talk about a specific one that I don't think a lot of people know about. And when you talk about it, it sounds like a made up fever dream. Just stick to the Christmas and or Christmas adjacent, I guess we'll call it, ones. Because I didn't realize how many of these there were. I did know that I'm pretty sure that this studio was either, like, absorbed by or turned into Studio Ghibli down the road. Like, I, that could be a totally made-up fact I just said, so don't take my word for gospel. But I think that's, a, I think that's true. Or, and or, like, Toei. Some, some a big anime company is, are the, they used to, they used to make these, and I'm, I'm, back in the day, I'm pretty sure, or that was completely fictitious. I'm just going to do the top five for you, and you tell me what your favorite one is. Coming in at number five, we got Jack Frost. And I don't particularly remember really caring for Jack Frost, but for some reason, I always think, wow, you're kind of a little prick. Wait, wait, didn't this company do the Hobbit movie? The cartoon one? Okay, that's a whole other thing for a whole other time. Okay, maybe not. Maybe he's not a jerk, but for some reason I affiliate him with being kind of a, a little... Isn't he supposed to be, like, impish, though? Like, isn't that the whole point? But either way, I always remember thinking Jack Frost looks really pretty. It's, like, a really pretty-looking, like, color pattern or color... It's just tonally. It's, it's just very nice to look at. But I'm pretty sure that's, like, him bringing snow to a small town. And I don't particularly remember anything except it looks nice. I think he falls in love with a lady? Doesn't he fall in love with a lady? I Something along those lines. Either way, Jack Frost has made it to number five, even though I vaguely remember it. Here's where things I started to get... I always get confused on these, and I'm sure other people do too. But at number four, I have Santa Claus is coming to town. Now, uh, Burger Meister Meister Burger or whatever. He, oh, sorry, I was, I'm trying to take this all out. But uh, this, one's, this, this one's like... The kids are not getting toys or something, and or they're really sad. There's something about it being a very... I remember it being very gray and very sad. And I don't always watch this one, but it's because I always mix it up with the other one we're going to talk about. But, I mean, it's a classic. It's an iconic classic. But I do mix it up with, uh, with The Year Without a Santa Claus. I mix those two up. Now, this is the one with the, the Burgermeister, who's like, kids can't have toys. Don't let them have nothing. And <laughs> it's super depressing and sad. And then Santa's like, hell no. I'm going to keep giving them away. Oh, and he goes by Kris Kringle, and he gets adopted, and we'll get into that more with the other one I'm going to talk about. Cause I, but yeah, he's adopted. He starts making toys, and then he is helping children out in like a small town, correct? I don't always watch that one, but I always at least like have it on in the background during the season. But the year without a Santa Claus, that's the one with I'm Mr. He Miser, and that one, right? Because that's iconic. That's a great one. Oh, is that one foot in front of the other? Jam. But I do think that The Year Without a Santa Claus is funner and more entertaining than Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Maybe that's a hot take. I don't, I don't know. You let me know. Because I really want to get to the number one. That's what we're really going to talk about. Number two, we have Rudolph. Now, we all love Rudolph, right? And at, when you first think about Rudolph, you're like, oh, it's about... It's about accepting one another for your differences and celebrating your differences instead of going, no, you're bad. But that elf is totally gay, right? And being a dentist is, I, I mean, not always. Not when I was a little kid. Rudolph, right? And at first, yeah, you think, okay, accept one another. Differences, they're okay, they're good. Until you watch it as an adult. And then you're like, yeah, thanks a lot, Claws. Just using the shit out of me. That's cool. That's what they do. That's literally what they do. They're like, oh, snap. Now we have a situation. Now we need you, Rudolph. Can you help us out? It's like, I'm surprised Rudolph didn't tell you to shove it. 
God, yeah. And what about the scene when his dad, who's his dad? His dad is Donner, I think. And he's like all ashamed. He's like, throw this dirt on your nose, kid. Hide it, hide it. Honestly, this could be a metaphor for a lot of different things with all these characters. But it, they're supposed to be misfits, you know? I get that. I'm fully aware. And I love this movie. I'm not, you know what I mean? I'm, I don't want people to think I'm bashing it. I'm just like, when you really, when you really sit down and watch it as an adult, you're like, wow, who's that little... Who's that little one who has the panic attack when he sees it light up? Uh, he's like, I'm, I'm Fireball, and it's like, your name's Fireball, why don't you chill? But I always, I always really liked when Clarice, the girl, is like, it's okay, it's fine, I, I, I like your nose. And it's like, no, I, 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 I like it, but like I said, there, it's just, it's wrote very basically, because it's a children's movie, so I'm not bashing on it. I'm just saying, like, if you don't laugh as an adult through Rudolph, like, wow. And then the misfit toys kick them out, too. They're like, get the hell out of our island. And it's like, jeez. And then they come back and get them in the end. But King Moonraker is intense and kind of scary when you're a kid. And the whole class is bashing. Is, it, is his name Herbie? or Cur It's Herbie, not Kirby. And he's like, Herbie doesn't want to make toys. Herbie doesn't want to make toys. Like, everybody's just smack talking Herbie. And it's like, whoa, whoa. They should have just had Santa say, like, a really heartfelt apology before, prior. You know, does he? No, I don't think he does, because it's just like, Rudolph, please do this for me. And it's like, man, you have been telling me I can't try out for this team. My dad has been really, really angry at me and very not nice and kind of emotionally abusive going on. And uh, my mom just wants things to be nice. And then I have to run off with my elf friend and we meet Cornelius. And the Bumble is one of the greatest designs ever. I love that. But yeah, it's it's hilarious when you're an adult, but I, I totally get it. But it's like, of course, I we all love Rudolph. And, but that's at number two for me, because number one, if you've seen this movie, please comment below. Please comment below and just say that you've seen it, because for years, I'm talking years past, with me and my sister thinking, we made this movie up. This movie doesn't exist. And the internet happened, and we were like, oh my god, it's real. And then we started watching it. Like, back when we were younger, we'd watch it, when, like, teenagers, we'd watch it, like, every year together. And this is the life and adventures of Santa Claus. <laughs> Santa is raised by a pixie, and then a lion is his adoptive mother, and he lives in the woods with pagan gods, all ruled by the great Ak, I believe. And then the wind god shows up, and it's all crazy. <laughs> Oh my god, let's just, oh my god, okay. The life and adventures of Santa Claus. Like, Santa Claus, the baby, abandoned and is found by this pixie mom, or like fairy, and is taken to this special, it's almost like Narnia, like he's taken to a special place, and by the end of it, they're like, we're gonna bestow the gift of, of living forever on you. Now, a minute ago, I was like, oh, I bet this came out, and then they were like, that's way too pagany. <laughs> make something else because also in Santa Claus is Coming to Town he's adopted and that's a story of him being adopted by the same company so I'm like maybe they got they were like no we need something more generic and that's where that came from but this came out after this came out 15 years after that one the interesting information I just found is that this story comes from like 1901 or 1902 like the the bones of it do so it's like, it's like the story of like why Santa can live forever and where his magic comes from. But it's, yes, it's Santa Claus adopted by a lion, a lion, not a talking lion, not a, a lion that, wa that, that, that walks like a human. No, it is a, anthropomorphic is the word I'm looking for. It's not like an anthropomorphic lion. It's a lion that lives in the special fairy woods and raises Santa Claus. Yes, you heard that correctly. I'm pretty sure they fight a gargoyle king and his minions of gargoyles. But, like, they have to call a great council before giving him the gift of, of, of immortality. And all the different gods show up, and it's like the sun god, the moon god, the wind god, and it's so cool. It's like such a cool, distinct thing. <sighs> but it's crazy. Okay, no, no, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta break some stuff down. I got up to get this, so I hope it doesn't bother anybody too much, but... Who is texting me? But, no, this is way crazier than I thought. Um, I forgot about the songs. Uh, it starts out with the Great Council, and they're all like, should we allow him to be immortal? But telling this... I'm just going to read this um, dialogue to you guys, okay? So they're all at their meeting. They're all at their big meeting going like, okay, I'm going to tell you about the life and adventures of Santa Claus, right? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna see if he deserves to be immortal. 
And it's kind of like Elf, where instead of them saying, like, I never got to settle down and have a kid, this one fairy is like, I wonder what a kid would be like. They sound great. I'd like to hold one, and is all geeked about it. And that becomes, like, his pseudo-actual mom besides the lion. But either way, the great act of saying some craziness. But some of these lines, jeez, man. He says, we live so happily here in the forest, we know nothing of the sorrows. <clears throat> the sorrow and misery that falls on the humans that, that live on this earth outside of our forest. And he's just like, it's the worst. It's the absolute worst. But he's explaining to the other immortal beings what humans are. And he's like, me and you don't ever change. You don't know what a kid is because we're just like this. You know what I mean? And then, and then he starts talking about, I found him in the snow, left abandoned, and was like, hey, Shiegra, the tiger, or the lion, uh, will you watch? Because he's like the great woodsman, so he can like speak to all these animals. And he's like, can you watch this baby, let it drink your milk, and protect it, and tell all the other animals in the woods don't harm him, and to let him live here. And this lion, like I said, it does not speak. It, it's roaring, and it, but it understands him, and it's like, got it. And it takes the baby. He's flashing back to first telling her about it, and he's telling the council about how one of these fairies was really intrigued by this and was all about adopting him. The one song I do remember is Babe in the Woods, or me and my sister made that up. But he's like, I came upon the babe crying. And I will say this, the great Ag, aka the woodsman, is pretty majestic. He's grown up in the woods, he's getting along with all the animals, he's one with nature, he's living in this special place with these special immortal beings and being raised by a fairy and a lion, and then the gargoyles attack, or tr they're the enemy, and he helps take them out, and that adds to, by the end, why the crew at the table is like, yeah, we should totally let him be immortal. He's a good soul. He looks out for kids. He's special. And so let's give him this gift. But I'm pretty sure he's on like the brink of death. And that's kind of disturbing. But I vividly remember the entrances of the, of the, the, I don't know what you want to call them, gods or something. But oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. That was the craziest part though, because I didn't watch the whole thing. I just like looked up the big parts was when the great act in the, maybe like, I don't know, it has to be like a couple minutes in, bursts into full-blown song and he's singing about the birth of santa claus in the woods and it's <laughs> yeah 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 and when he's singing he's like we have laws and you can't have kids in the woods that are special and then one of the fairies is like i'd like to see a baby and then she's all about it and that's why i compared it to elf where he's like oh an elf that didn't settle down yet and he's like santa i'll i'll, I'll take him it's kind of like that where she's just like I, that kind of sounds like something I'd want to do. I'll take this baby. But like I said, the whole thing is like, should we allow him to live forever and keep doing what he's doing? I will say this, which I guess Santa Claus is coming to town has it too, but I appreciate seeing younger Santa. And there's a really great younger Santa throughout this, and I like it. And he's a badass. And he fights gargoyles. <laughs> it's a gargoyle fighting Santa who's up for trial of should he live forever. And the gods of the elements are deciding. If I can find the clips and they're decent enough to put on here, I'll put them on here because we, you guys have to see this to believe it. Good Queen Zerline, it will be a truly unusual night. Yes, Great Ak. I wish you success. I must convince them. Or tonight will be Santa Claus' last sleigh ride. The Queen of the Water Spirits. The Princess Flash and Twilight. The Protector of the Nooks, King of the Riles. I bid you welcome. We are called here to discuss the man known as Santa Claus. A mortal who has won the love of the entire world. Man, he's really ready to go to war. This is a movie about Santa Claus. Just remember that.
Oh snap, step into that wood nymph magic. Gonna get this dragon. Obviously, spoiler alert, they let Santa live forever. But the best part is the entrances of the gods. And I, did they redo it in cartoon? It's 50 minutes. It's on Fubo TV, whatever that is. Thank and Baz movies. I know we all love them, but I didn't realize how many there were. Like the Leprechaun one, I've never heard of that. But then I was talking about Peter Cottontail at work and people were like, what the hell is Peter Cottontail? And I was like, you don't remember Iron Tail and Peter Cottontail and it's a whole thing. And the same guy who's in the beginning of the other Rankin Bass ones that looks like, I don't know, like a Frank Sinatra-esque claymation character. Or something. He's supposed to be like somebody, but it's it's the name is escaping me right now. But either way, he's in the beginning of a lot of them talking. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know who I'm talking about once you see him. <clears throat> And he's like the narrator of the stories. But I realized um, a lot of people, uh, including myself, don't know how many of these there there are for, for many different holidays. I was like, oh my god, they were really... Do you know how long claymation takes? Some acknowledgement to these other ones. Um, Rudolph and Frosty, Christmas in July. I, I, don't, I didn't watch this one until I was an adult. And I remember being like, this is kind of fun. I, okay. And it's something about like... Rudolph's nose is is going out and it and the magic comes from the nor the northern lights the aurora borealis and so they have to him and frosty have to team up to to do something to keep that from half from going out oh oh that's it that's it no they want frosty in on their plot to help them with their evil winter storm to take out Rudolph right something like that but either way I remember being like I like this this is fun I I it isn't one of the classics I watched as a kid but it's pretty fun. I think this one is the second most out there besides The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus, which is um, Rudolph's Shiny New Year. Now, that's when they're time traveling, right? Or like jumping through months to different seasons, to different holidays. Something's taking place there. But Father Time is there. Rankin Bass gets real crazy with their immortal characters. Yeah, Father Time looks like a skinny Santa, but and the great he looks like skinny Santa and the great act put together without cool horns on his head. There's a reason they're jumping through years, but that was another one where I was like, this is insane, but it's a fun little watch, I guess. I, I'm I'm assuming somebody was trying to jump on the uh, the New Year's market and was like, we got enough Christmas over here, we need something to watch in a week. I know a lot of people really love the Little Drummer Boy. I, it just wasn't one we watched all the time, which I'm kind of surprised by because I went to Catholic school and mom was all about that stuff. So it's like, I'm kind of shocked we didn't watch that one. But the one I really, uh, I, I didn't watch this one until an adult either, but I, the one I think is the most adorable is Nestor, the Christmas donkey or whatever. And I think that that's nativity related. But what an adorable little donkey. I had this thought at work and then I was just like, no, I, I didn't get to do Vlogmas. I want to talk about Christmas stuff. What should we talk about? Then I was like, oh, the great act. I don't know how many people know about that. And and like I said, I'll put the clips in here if I can find decent ones. But yeah, the Rankin Bass movies. Tell me if you've seen The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus. Tell me which ones are classics for you and your family or for you growing up that maybe aren't in my classics. Maybe you watch Little Drummer Boy every year or something, you know? And also, like I said, throw in Rudolph. You're going to get a laugh out of it. I'm Abby with Motor City Nerds. Uh, thank you to everybody who's here. If you're if you're not subscribed, maybe subscribe. That'd be cool. Uh, like the video, dislike the video, comment, leave a penguin down in the comments. It's all it, it's free, and it really helps me out. And yeah, I'm finally on break, guys. I'm geeked. I'm geeked. We're gonna talk about Interview with the Vampire. We're gonna talk about the Mayfair Witches. We're gonna talk about everything. All I want to do is record, record, record. And it's like no, I should go to bed, but I really don't want to.